Jonathan, you've been following the National Front throughout the campaign. After this defeat, despite their successful vote to some extent, what is their future now? I think the plan is to become the main centre-right party of opposition. Emmanuel Macron has got where he's centre -right. got. Yeah. Centre-right. Emmanuel Macron has got where he has got because he has profited from civil war amongst the other parties. The risk for the Front National is that they descend into civil war as well because of these changes. So the name is going to change. We don't know what the new name of the Front National will be. Marine Le Pen will probably have to rethink the policy of leaving the Eurozone mm -hmm. because it's not popular with the French people. She may have to rethink the idea of having a referendum on EU membership because that's not popular as well. There are divisions between the north of the country and the south of the country. The north is much more state protectionist. Uh, the south, the Front National, is much more uh, free market and socially conservative. She has the ghost of her father, Jean-Marie, to think about, will be appalled by any changes. But they were certainly trying to put a brave face on things when I joined them last night. You can tell French nationalists are in trouble when even singing the Marseillaise seems to stick in the throat. And in a former hunting lodge, far from the grandeur of the Louvre, you can hear the boos of the French far right brought to ground after a bruising campaign. But there was no shock at the result, and any sadness was brief. The Front National had polled over 10 million votes, over 33% of the total, so party time after the party's highest ever score. Marine Le Pen had almost banished her father's ghost, but still not far away enough to make the party electable. There's talk of ditching the FN name, with Marine herself staying on to ring the changes. I propose beginning a profound transformation of our movement in order to become the new political force that many French men and women are hoping for, and which is more necessary than ever to bring the country back. Marine Le Pen has conceded remarkably quickly, 10 minutes after the polls have closed. But the French have a tendency to try and stop the changes that they have just voted for. And if Emmanuel Macron does not sort out France's huge problems, chiefly unemployment running at 10% and 25% for young people, then the Front National will be waiting in the wings, waiting for Monsieur Macron to fail. Later, Le Pen took to the dance floor to celebrate. 12 million voters had abstained or cast blank or spoiled ballots, so Macron has many more enemies than those who voted for her. A man in a beret braved the disco music to tell me it was a temporary defeat in a long war. Populist nationalists have already lost in Austria and the Netherlands, but Le Pen's campaign manager insists patriotism is bound to be contagious. But after Trump and Brexit, no Marine Le Pen, no, no, no follow through. For now, the question is not, is not if, it is when. Because as you know, the system that uh, gained the election tonight has been defeated in other countries the United States and also the United Kingdom. Uh, every country is evolving at, at its own rhythm. I mean, it's not done Though one analyst told me this morning that Le Pen's TV debate performance had left the party far more downbeat than it appeared. I would say right now the Front National is trying to recover from basically their massive disappointment. Uh, Marine Le Pen flubbed it. She could have been above 40%. She was incredibly non-professional in the debate. Uh, she, she read the country wrong in many ways. She was aggressive. People came out of this thinking that woman cannot rule. So what she's doing now is she says, oh, we have to entirely reorganize the party with all our new voters. What she's really saying is, I want to hang on to power. Yet in the northern town of Enin Beaumont, where unemployment is high, Le Pen scored a personal best, 61% of the vote. And her party will now fight to become the new opposition. First of all, we have the uh, parliamentary elections where we could, uh, by having a uh, a, a big, uh, a big numbers of MPs. Uh, we could also uh, take care of what's going on in the country and try, uh, try to be the opposition. Yeah, and try to protect France from this uh, uh, outrageous uh, program. Judging from this crowd, the Front National's transformation is underway. Controlled immigration and a referendum on EU membership are, of course, not a million miles from the politics across the English Channel. And if President Macron stumbles, the party's blue rose may bloom again.
Well, that's enough about Marine Le Pen. Let's talk about Emmanuel Macron, the man at the moment. And he himself has said that his task is immense. Is he up to it? Well, the task is immense. There are 577 MPs in the French Parliament. Emmanuel Macron doesn't have a single MP. He's just announced today the name of his party. It was En Marche as a movement, meaning mm. forward. Now it is La République En Marche, so he now at least has a, has a, a formal party. The idea is that he has to persuade existing MPs from the left and the right, from the moderate wings of both ends, to, to join him in some big happy family, at the same time sifting through 14,000 applications from the members of the general public mm. to take up the other seats. In and then, a month? In a month, for, for a, a parliamentary election in a, in a month's time. So it's an enormous task, because you're essentially asking the left and the right, mm. who've already been routed in this election, to be like turkeys voting for Christmas, mm. completely destroy their parties, and to join him. And even if they do join him, they may try and subvert him uh, once he, he starts moving. And yeah. once you, you look at things like reform of labour laws, those sort of things, the French do what they've done in the past, mm. which is they vote for change and say, yes, we need something new, and then they do all they can mm. to stop it. And of course, if Emmanuel Macron does not do things like reform mm. labour laws, then the honeymoon with Angela Merkel will yeah. be very short-lived, and his mm. ideas of having a, a, a help from the rest of the Eurozone mm. will be short-lived as well. And we'll be back for those elections, of course. Jonathan, thanks very much.